Well, this afternoon I find myself on the Upper West Side of Manhattan and I'm going to the Natural History Museum where there is a new wing. Uh, I'll put the name up on the screen now, I'm blanking. But it looked really interesting from a photography slash architectural standpoint. So I'm going to check it out and see if I can get some good shots. So I'll be there in about five or six minutes. By the way, I used to live in this neighborhood. Uh, when I lived in New York City, I lived on West 75th Street, which right now is about two blocks down Columbus Avenue from where I am. So, uh, great fond memories of this location. Well, I made it over to the museum. Uh, the well-known facade of the museum is on Central Park West, heading east from here. I'm on the Columbus Avenue side, but Here's where the new wing is, the new addition. It's the uh, Richard Gilder Center uh, for Science, Education, and Innovation. But you can see behind me, it's, uh, well, I'll turn the camera and I'll show you what I'm looking at. It's gonna be tough to capture from the outside. I'm gonna do my best here. And the sky is not that interesting, but uh, we'll see what I can do with my wide angle lens. Well, I just spoke to this guard back here and <laughs> the inside of this wing, this new area, is closed for the afternoon for a private event, which, not shockingly, I'm not invited to. So, uh, I basically took the train in from Connecticut uh, for not nothing, I'll shoot the outside, but the inside actually was more interesting to me. It's really cool. Um, so that might be a separate video. So what I need to do, if I want to put this video up, I got to get something interesting from the outside here. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Really disappointing. Well, that footage you just saw was from several months ago. Uh, basically tried to get into the museum or the part of the museum I wanted to go to, but it was closed for a private event. So I did take some outdoor shots, and they actually came out pretty cool. It's a hard building to photograph from the outside. I'll turn around and show you in a second, because there's a lot of trees around, uh, and the sun is really most of the day on the other side of the building. Uh, but I got some decent shots that are sort of abstract in nature. Uh, today I'm gonna try to go in again. I hope it's not closed. The internet says it is open, but it said it last time too, so. We'll see. Well, I am inside the newest part of the Natural History Museum on the west side of Manhattan, and it is a really cool structure. So I'm going to uh, walk around, I'll turn the camera around, I'll give you a sense of what I'm looking at, and the challenge would be to get some cool photos, so we'll see. It's called the Gilder Center. Uh, tried to come when I didn't think that many people would be here, but clearly there's a uh, classroom of kids, which is fine. I really can't ask them to leave, but uh, I might wait around a little bit, see if it gets a little less crowded, and uh, I get some shots. All right, well, I got some shots on the ground floor. I'm gonna uh, walk up these main stairs and see if there are other angles to shoot this building from. I'm sure there are. So, uh, it's a little less crowded now, but uh, if there's any really distracting people in my frame, I will 
flowing them out. Well, I get up to the top floor. Uh, kind of an interesting angle. Again, uh, wandering around just seeing what I can see, but uh, I think I'll definitely get something interesting out of this visit. Uh, it's not quite as I imagined it, but, uh, but that's almost always the case with photography, right? Well, luckily I brought my wide-angle lens. I think that is definitely the lens to have here. Uh, a lot of the shots I'm getting, I think, are really abstract in nature, which makes them, I think, kind of interesting. I think when I put them up, some people are gonna be like, what am I looking at? Uh, which is intriguing to me when this is man-made architecture that has a, a real utility to it, serving as a museum, and you can capture things that are abstract in nature, Kind of a rush that I get out of that. So I do like the view from this side, looking straight up, you see all the different levels and the light coming in is interesting. Of course, we've got people in the frame. So I think what I'm gonna do is test out the remove tool in Photoshop and see if I can get a shot without any people in it. Uh, it should be pretty easy. I think it would make a pretty cool shot. Well, I think I added a pretty good spot for places to shoot in New York City. Um, if you're into Photoshop, stick around. I'll show you how I process one of those images in Photoshop. If it's not your thing, just uh, sign off here, but make sure you do give me a like as it helps the channel and if you like this kind of content make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos okay well i am back on my computer that was a great trip to this museum uh, what i want to do now is show you how i process this image on the screen from this to this so i really didn't do too much uh, i chose an outdoor shot because the indoor ones frankly did not need a lot of processing uh, the way the light was hitting parts of the building created a nice contrast and gradients, so I really didn't do too much. This outside one I thought needed a little bit of help. Uh, <clears throat> this was a tricky shot because the sun is kind of mostly behind the building or at least to the right of the building. Uh, and so I wanted to really highlight some of the features of the building and uh, create more contrast with different parts of the structure as well. Um, I did some work in Lightroom already. I converted to black and white. I brought up some of the shadows and I, uh, I pulled down some of the blues. You get that nice contrast in the sky between the sky and the clouds. Um, what I've done ahead of time is made a number of selections. So I use the polygonal lasso tool to select part of the buildings. Uh, to save those selections, you just go up to select uh, save selection. It's grayed out now because I don't have one selected. Think of a name for it. I usually just number them um, <clears throat> if I if I can. Um, and so, for example, this lower part of the structure, this curved. I like this curve, but I want to brighten it up, and I also want to accentuate the curved feature of the building. So let's load that selection. Uh, I probably just called it one. And so you can see those marching ants around that selection. What I want to do is first brighten up the whole selection. And I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to pull up on the line. And that obviously brightens up the whole thing. To really accentuate the curvature of it, I just want that middle part to be a bit brighter. So what I'm going to do is reselect it. I can go to select, reselect. I'm going to choose my gradient tool and I want to choose the reflected gradient tool which is selected here. Um, I want to make sure my foreground color is white so right now you see it's black over here you can hit these double arrows and it flips them. If I pull out from the center you'll see the middle portion of the selection is going to get brighter. 
and so and then you could always move it as well uh, to shift it over. So something like that works pretty well. Uh, let me just uh, get out of here. I'm going to deselect the selection by hitting Command D. I'm on a Mac, and so you do get this brighter portion, which again accentuates the curvature. Here's the before, kind of flat. Here's the after. I want to do similar things with different parts of the building as well. It's really the facade that faces out that I want brightened up. The overhangs I want to keep darker and I'll, that'll create some contrast between the facade and the overhang. So let's pick another selection, uh, load selection. <clears throat> I'll do two, uh, the one right above it. Uh, again, I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to pull up on the curve to brighten up the whole selection. But here, I just kind of want the left side of this to be brighter. Again, it will accentuate the curve of the building a bit. So I'm going to reselect. I'm going to choose my gradient tool. This time, I'm going to choose the, uh, the just the regular linear gradient tool. Uh, my foreground color is white. And so I'm going to pull from the left. And you can see that kind of the left side of it uh, is becoming a bit brighter. Um, let me just hit, uh, click away from this. I'm going to deselect the selection. And so you can see, uh, here's the before, here's the after. You know, even the right side of this piece of the building, I definitely want to brighten that up a little bit. So I'm going to go up to selection, load selection. I probably called this th three. It's down here. <clears throat> you see that selection and I'm going to choose a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to pull up to brighten it up. Uh, once again, select, I'm going to reselect it. I'm going to choose my gradient tool. Uh, I'm going to choose the linear gradient gradient tool, which is selected and pull from this side and you see it starts to brighten it up. Um, let me just click away from this deselect it. And so for these two selections, if I get rid of both of them, you know, that selection, that section of the building is kind of flat, pull it up, all of a sudden it creates some drama. I'm not going to go through everything. I'll click on the final image, but you get a sense. I did work on the, on the right side. And at the end, my last step was a curves adjustment layer for the entire image. And I just added more of an S curve to it. If you look here, you'll see that S curve. Uh, so I created something that, uh, again, elevated the image, something a little bit more fine art, highlighted some of the features of the building, created contrast, a little bit of drama, and I think is superior to what I started with. I uh, hope you found that interesting. Uh, you got to check out this building if you are in New York City and you've got some time. Um, and again, if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And until next time.